Eagles fan that is. Wait, why did she get canceled? I honestly for, forgot about her. I just forgot about her whole story and everything. For years, Ellen was one so of the I'm most not gonna lie, be chat. I'm not gonna be chat. Okay. Please don't be chat. And I ain't gonna lie, it's probably a better idea if you don't chat while you're in the shower. But um, cursing unassuming stay-at-home mothers for her own sick amusement, taking selfies with creepers, and who could forget cuddling with Pete? Oh, I f yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, she probably was part of the Diddy accusations too. She probably was part of the parties, bro. Actually, sort she of is. I don't know. I'm saying probably like it's not confirmed. I think, I think it was confirmed. Actually, I don't know. I, for, I don't know. I don't know, man. Yo, y'all can't lie. Her show was tough. I used to watch her when I was like eight. Her show was fire. Y'all cannot lie. Her show was fire. Keep in mind, guys, this is back when you could find an oddly shaped Cheeto and end up on that godforsaken couch. And people ate this shit up for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And she was essentially being forced down our throats for a very long time. But for Ellen, it wasn't always like this. She had to grind for years to become a successful like a comedian back in the late 80s and early 90s. No, no, no disrespect. And after being voted the funniest comedian in the country and making a few appearances on late night television, she would come out with her own self-titled sitcom that did very well. Ellen. That was until she revealed her sexuality both on the show and in real life. Susan, I'm gay. Is that a surprise? Look at her. Like, bro. No disrespect, but, like, her hair. That's the way I don't know. What the hell am I watching? That smile. Man, I actually need a PC. It's getting bad. It's actually getting horrible. Did people not know this? And or am I tripping? Because the world was not socially ready for that during the nineties. And then everybody Oh, got it so was the nineties, so that's probably different back then. Even Elton John, who I'd never met in my life, Elton John said, "We know you're gay. Shut up and be funny." It's funny because I uh, all along that was my biggest fear is that it was going to get canceled. I never wanted to be an activist. I just wanted to entertain people. I just wanted to make people feel good. So then she was outcasted, but slowly made her way back. So Jamar, you're going to make a video about her, but making you kind of feel bad. That's crazy. Finding Nemo, which was a massive hit. Keep swimming, swimming, swimming. And this leads to her getting her foot back into the entertainment door and eventually becoming a titan in daytime television. And so for years, her infamous catchphrase on her show that represents her entire brand was be kind to one another as people even referred to ellen as the queen of nice which of course turns out to be horrifically ironic in the end in 2020 hundreds of stories went viral on social media describing ellen as a bully both at work and in her personal life talks of a toxic work environment were at the forefront of these complaints including racist undertones intimidation and even sexual misconduct from high-level employees were all alleged against Ellen and this workplace that she had created. High-level employees from producers to talent on the show have all corroborated these allegations of a toxic work environment. Were you surprised by the sheer number of responses that you got? I actually was surprised by that, and especially the variety of different kinds of stories. Wait, so wait, what is she doing now then? Because Ellen, oh, it's, it's like her, about, like, oh, Ellen her comeback. Quite as nice. I didn't even know she made a she comeback, man. She would appear. Moscat won two daytime Emmys with the show. She was let go in 2004. As a host, she's amazing. As a host. But as a boss... And someone who's behind the scenes running the show, she's a different person. She's not the person people see in front of the camera. This it's like every single famous person. You know, I can't, but I'm not going to be like that. Office, has been going Trust on me. For 16 years. While I am grateful for the opportunity it afforded me, I did experience and feel the toxicity of the environment, he writes on Instagram. Allegedly, Ellen was sending people home if she didn't like how you smelled. People were not allowed to eat the certain types of food while on set. There were stories of employees being terminated suddenly and without reason many employees Act like you can't like, just smack the shit out of her i'm not trained like... to not even make eye contact or expect to be acknowledged by ellen a former ellen staffer writes i saw ellen in the hallways every day and would say hello and she never once said hello back she wouldn't smile she wouldn't even acknowledge me at all for two seasons and it sounds like Damn. she would go out of her way to publicly embarrass employees on a consistent basis. Basically, it seems like Ellen is one of those people who thinks she is better than others, and she wants to let them know it by acting like they are the dirt underneath her shoe if she deems you or your job is under I'm not even trying to be weird, but in this case, you kind of are better than other people if you're, like, famous. Like, I want to say better, but you have more power, so that makes you just, like, on top. Like, it's... 
Eh, I don't know. But that's like a dickhead saying that. So you know what? Let me just watch the video, bro. Understand, guys, that these stories were not only coming from the workplace, but also from people who were dealing with Ellen in her everyday life. Like this bodyguard who frequently works with celebrities, who said that Ellen was the first and only who he had ever worked for to not even acknowledge his presence. And this waitress who claims that Ellen went out of her way to email her boss to try and get her fired over chipped nail polish. She emailed the owner of the restaurant and complained about your chipped nail polish. What? And I was like... Not only that, but also during her show, her audience members who got to participate in her games and whatnot also had stories of her being an elitist douchebag. You just expect a lot when you go to meet like your idol, and then when you get disappointed, it's like such a letdown. And they tell you that's you know, actually you can't sad. Be that's crazy. Smarter, yeah. funnier than Ellen. She's the comedian and the star, not you. Would only speak to the audience when the cameras were rolling. As soon as they turned the cameras off, she would not even acknowledge the audience she would just sit on the couch basically and even when she went over to australia to do some shows over there this is what a radio show host who was invited on had to say about his experience and how this is crazy yo every single famous person getting exposed this is actually crazy bro drake diddy ellen i mean at least ellen's not like a, a pedo but like still still getting exposed either way bro who worked with her walked on eggshells the whole time and the whole thing was totally bizarre like we're there to do an interview with her to promote what she's doing, but you can't look at her like someone get real. And obviously with <laughs> her having this long-standing mm -hmm. reputation as this person who promoted nothing but positivity, people were shocked and outraged at this walking contradiction that Ellen had become. And at the time when she tried and failed to make a comeback, she also gave this half-assed apology letter where she tried to dump the blame on everyone else. I'm just so sorry that it's come to this. I really don't know what to say other than this has gone on way, 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 way too long. People have gotten away with murder. Basically, it's that she had no idea that this is what life was like. What? Like that. Given just the nature of the show, is that her employees People have gotten away. What the hell? No what is she saying? Is that... saying she wasn't Why she perfect me say that? And realized that some leaders were not as sensitive to human beings as they should have been adding that reading disturbing allegations about the atmosphere on the show was heartbreaking. So when Ellen says she's not aware of this uh, environment, you don't think that rings true? It's a lie. And this would become a running theme for Ellen not to take any true accountability for her downfalls. And then she also addressed downfalls. the Downfalls. So she took show, more than one, basically bro. Basically saying that if these things were going on, that she had no idea about it, while those making the accusations made it sound like she was the ringleader. How was everybody's summer, good? Yeah, mine was great. <laughs> Being known as the be kind lady is a tricky position to be in. So let me give you some advice out there. If anybody's thinking of changing their title or giving yourself a nickname, do not go with the be kind lady. And this shit somehow gets even more dystopian when you realize that this was the audience she was standing in front of. The show after that ran for two years and it was essentially a corpse of itself. Forced laughter, forced kindness, and it was clear that Ellen was feeling the pressure while crying about the situation she put herself in. Ratings were at an all time no low. Wish, and like, old clips began that's to crazy. I ain't gonna lie. That's a light on the downright douchebaggery that Ellen displayed during her interactions with various guests on her show over the years. Only further adding to the cancellation of Ellen and her empire of a brand. And now, guys, a whopping four years after she was thrown away like a wallet condom, Ellen is back with a stand up special of all things. And Grandma is holding no punches on this one when it comes to her quest for self pity. It opens with the classic comedian in the green room shot as she seemingly reflects on her career. But this moment of reflection quickly turns bitter as poor Ellen is ironically painted as being hurt by the mean headlines. And I knew that we were in for a doozy as soon as she walked up the stairs and they showed various headlines for ABC her cancellation Ellen era. In a closet. And that apparently she was what accused of going too far and being too gay. Yes, I'm serious. Being accused of going too far, too gay. As if that had absolutely what if Ellen got a low tape? That's what I'm saying, bro. You guys scared the hell out of me, bro. And that should have been the moment that we all should have known that she was going to play the victim here. I mean, seriously, you had four years to reflect, Oscar. do therapy, ayahuasca. Did she just come back? Like, this is like Rogers new. And George like, Bush, and this is what you come up with. 
And then they directly address the elephant in the room, her cancellation. Break. I actually want to watch this. Wait, hold on. Bro, like, if I break this laptop and snap this shit in, in half, would I be wrong? Would I really be wrong? Okay, yeah. Breaking news Doctor. tonight. Is the queen of nice really the queen of me? Toxic, phony, hypocrite, liar. I mean, with situations like this, it's almost when this come out? point where I truly believe that some people just lack the ability to take any sort of accountability. She even tries to foreshadow her eventual downfall with a quote from one of her older stand-up specials. Years ago, I started ending my show by saying, be kind to one another. Here's the downside. Um, I can never do anything unkind ever now. This toxic workplace angle was the shit that I expected. That's actually the most like ironic thing out. ever. That's actually funny, bro. Right? white face Holy is just shit. so insane. I mean, I'm serious. I paused the video, I loaded it in 4K, and I didn't see a drop of melanin in the crowd. Or anyone under the age of 40 for that matter. She starts out with Botox and face filler jokes, and parlays that into another joke about parallel parking. I think we all care what people think. We can say we don't. We can pretend we don't care what people think, but all it takes is trying to parallel park in front of a crowded outdoor cafe. Spot looks big enough. You line it up the way you always do. You pull in, cut it a little too close. You're scraping the hubcap the entire way along the curb. I'm sorry, but on a personal level, Grandma's parking lot adventures just aren't doing it for me. It has the same energy as a boomer trying to step into this century and learn to use an iPhone. She goes on and on about how she doesn't know how to use the basic functions of her car like her fucking windshield wipers and how embarrassing it apparently is when she cannot turn them off. Like even if we just can't figure out how to turn our windshield wipers off, which to me is one of the most embarrassing things is driving a car when it's not raining and the windshield wipers are going. Damn, and then you're trying to fiddle with it, trying to turn it off. And you don't know how to turn it off because it's always different. Sometimes it's on the end of the lever on the steering wheel. Sometimes there's a lever within the lever. Ellen, just stop the bullshit. We know that you have absolutely no shame with your conniving ass. I mean, to be fair, she's always been a pretty clean comedian when it comes to her stand-up. And she's kind of cut from that same cloth as Jerry Seinfeld's. Which is really not my type of stand-up. Regardless, this whole thing is just not very... I remember those car, those car videos where they had, like, the famous people. Those were fire. I used to watch those all the time. Like, like, the, the, time. like the famous people used to be in the cars, bro. Serious, right? Those, those are so tough. Engine. That's vague. Bro, why is my camera... Why well, not focusing, bro? Hold on. I mean, you go away for almost four years, and this is what you come up with, <sighs> with all the crazy shit that has taken place in the world, and we got to right, is it better now? ability to understand cars for 20 minutes. Is it better now? I have never used my parking brake. I have never parked my car and thought, I want it more parked than this. Now, after this, she does jump right into oh, the Oh, wait, that scared me. Hold on. Which I really think was the whole purpose of the special and her tour in general. All right, all let right. me see what else I can tell you about that been going on oh yeah i got kicked out of show business all right yeah because yeah, i'm mean yeah yeah you can't be mean and be in show business no, they'll kick you out and then she kind of half cries about the fact that when she goes to a restaurant people are just waiting for her to be a bitch or to do something mean and how she's beyond sick of this mean queen label and i will admit some of the dialogue here is pretty funny I do like this little part about her talking with a therapist about the cancellation. At one point, my therapist said, Ellen, where do you get this idea that everyone hates you? And I said, well, um, New York Times, Washington Post. She then talks about the ironic send-off phrase that she used to use saying to be kind to one another and that it would have been better if she said, Go fuck yourselves. So this is like new? Oh. So Grandma's really living life on the edge here. I mean, the mask has slipped and she has started to admit her own intolerance for everyday people. And this is when the real deflection starts. Basically, she jokes that harmless pranks and games were the reason behind the toxic workplace allegations. She also claims that she never even wanted to be the boss and that she wasn't in charge on the set of her shows. Which is a way different tune than what she was singing when she did her first show back after the drama. I know that I'm in a position of privilege and power, and I realize that with that comes responsibility, and I take responsibility for what happens at my show. It's like when there's an ad, it like loads for like, I mean, 15 minutes, bro. 
sick and tired of this, dude. I need a PC right, right now. Alright, bye. This is the Ellen DeGeneres Show. I am Ellen DeGeneres. My name is there. My name is there. My name is on underwear. I mean, it looked like I was the boss. The show was called Ellen, and everybody was wearing t-shirts that said Ellen, and there were buildings all over the Warner Brothers lot that said Ellen, and... But I don't think that meant that I should be in charge. I mean, talk about a lazy-ass cop-out when people have gone on record to say that she was the main culprit in creating this environment where bully behavior ran rampant. She also tries to make the point that she got canceled because she is a woman. Most women oh are my gosh, here we go, they, they bro. Just aren't, and we're too self-conscious, which is why you rarely see a woman playing air guitar. Look, Ellen, you didn't get canceled for being a woman. You got canceled for being a fraud. The physical comedy in general here is pretty bad, but hey, she is like 70 years old. She continues here to hammer down the point that she got canceled because she was too far against the grain. Eventually they're gonna kick me out a third time for being old, mean, old, and gay, the triple crown. Honestly, I would argue that she's become so famous because she was unapologetically gay at a time when it was not very common or accepted. And yes, at that time, she did take a huge that chance makes and faced a lot of backlash for doing so, but it obviously made her a pioneer in the entertainment space and really a gay icon forever. She then makes this weird illusion that she might be kind of autistic. Someone did suggest that I get tested to see if I'm on the spectrum. <laughs> well, I am on the spectrum. We all are. It's a spectrum. And then she claims that, that she has joke, OCD, though. and she even says that she has ADD. I don't know. This whole special isn't actually the worst thing I've seen in recent times. That award goes to Joe Rogan. Well, I'd rather watch this over KSI's new music video. Yeah, you didn't know that. I've been knew that. The way she looked when I was little, like, I'm not stereotypical. Well, that basically, that, that is stereotypical. But I just looked at her. I already knew she was already knew it, bro. Last month. But much like Joe... I think the main problem here is that it has been such a long time since Ellen has lived any sort of normal life, meaning most of the stuff that she says is just not very relatable to the average person. And her whole dialogue around her cancellation is really just a lot of deflection, and it's not even clever deflection at that. And this speech right here at the end just made me cringe on a whole nother level. I'm happy not being a boss or a brand or a billboard, just a person, just a multifaceted person with different feelings and emotions, and I can be happy and sad and compassionate or frustrated and OCD and ADD. I'm honest, I'm generous, I'm sensitive and thoughtful, but I'm tough and I'm impatient and I'm demanding, I'm direct. I'm a strong woman. What the fuck? Did you hear about the hurricane? Yeah, I heard about the hurricane in Florida. Hilarious. Keep in mind, this is coming from a woman who allegedly demanded lower levels of her staff on her show not even make eye contact with her and frequently treated the people she worked with like fucking peasants. I mean, to me, Ellen's always been on some weird Illuminati shit. And something tells me that she spent a lot of time with P. Diddy, if you know what I'm saying. Happy birthday, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, or as I call him, Cuddle McSnuggle Stuff. You don't need to know why. This group of kids had a dream to dance with Diddy. Today that dream came true. No matter what name you go by, you were always one of my favorite people to have on the show, Diddy. Thanks to my friend Diddy, you're always the life of the party. Apparently I have a history of not knowing which parties I've been invited to, at Diddy. Either way, they just give her a standing ovation while she watches on in all her glory. I mean, seriously. Damn, alright, um... You know, it's almost like watching a kid get a participation trophy. Like, yes, we all know you actually sucked. She closes the show out by basically saying all those, those kids are probably traumatized. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine being like one of those kids on that show, and then you look back and like find out that you, that was you. And like, yeah, that's crazy, that in man. The end, people will remember her as someone who was loved by the masses. And this is where the show really wraps up. They do like ten different rounds of applause for her in the last five minutes. And overall, she just kind of paints herself as some sort of martyr, which is just hilarious. Overall, the special was fine. It was just really boring. Tell Auntie to get off the, the mic, bro. It's like, was just a massive retire, man. It's too, you're too old, man. Oh, my I've ever seen. Absolutely not. I mean, I've watched the gringo poppy. I just didn't really find this funny at all, but it wasn't exactly, like, unbearable. And at the end of the day, Ellen's legacy will be that she was a pillar in the gay community, who, in my opinion, overstayed her welcome and bit off more than she can chew. But I want to know what Shacks. you guys think about Ellen's comeback down below in the comments. I also want to thank you guys for watching today's video, dropping a like, and subscribing. But as you guys know, it's... This ending music is so fire.
and some other narcissist celebrities out here need to be covered. So I'm out. Peace. Damn, Hari, man. Yo, another good video. Ellen, what the?